us, Dakota Live Virtual. We're visiting with the music director and principal conductor for the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra, and that is Delta David Geyer. Things have changed, of course, dramatically in the schedule and performances for the symphony and, and activities. David, but um, oftentimes music can be an outstanding therapeutic device that can sometimes be a companion or you can be immersed in it. If, if you were writing a prescription, what advice would you give to folks to, to use music to escape or find a place of comfort? Well, uh, the escape clause is how I think we usually think of music for relaxation, for enjoyment. At times like this, um, I think that people look particularly to classical music for, for meaning, for comfort. And, um, you know, in, in my view, there's no better music for that than Bach, um, which is, and you'll find our, our St. John Passion, along with a podcast, uh, exploring the, uh, both the, both the musical and the spiritual side of that piece, you'll find on our website, uh, sdsymphony.org. Um, so that's a prescription for the soul. Um, and then there are other musics that are of a lighter nature, which will help to take our minds off, uh, off of it, too, as, uh, such as some of the string quartet music we'll hear in a moment. Actually, that activity, I mean, it it's, it's, means has extra special meaning at a time like this, but, but that's actually part of the outreach that the symphony and the players do throughout the year. That's right. We have a program called Music as Medicine, which is in both of the hospitals here in Sioux Falls, Sanford, and Avera. Um, and it, it goes everywhere from Dakota facilities to behavioral health to, to a cancer infusion bay. Um, our, our musicians will go in and play music um, to, to minister to people, basically. And it's not just the patients, it's also the staff of the hospitals. We've had so much wonderful feedback from the nurses and the rest of the staff that are there that like, it just brings a breath of fresh air into their, into their day whenever, whenever our musicians are able to show up and share, share music. It just ministers to the soul. You know, I've asked this question to some other musicians I've talked with who are involved in, in similar activities. And uh, there's no doubt that it has great meaning for the audience. But for you, and maybe speaking for some of the players that are involved, what does that mean for the musician when they can give that gift, that gift of therapy and comfort? Well, our playing of the music is only half of the equation. Um, and at this... I think this is a way for, for any musician um, of any idiom, but perhaps even more so for, mu for musicians that play only acoustically, uh, not amplified. Because I, I often think about being in a concert hall, you have well over a thousand people that are gathered together, and, and we on the stage do not consider that we're isolated from the audience just performing music for uh, for, for people to listen to. To us, it's a communal experience. I mean, we can actually feel the audience. We can hear them breathe. Um, there's a, there's, there are times in the middle of a, of a piece of music at a poignant moment that comes to silence where you could hear a pin drop from the balcony uh, because people are, you can just sense that people are on the edge of their seat giving such close attention, which is exactly what this music is asking of you. You can't experience it merely as entertainment and, and, and passively, that's possible. But that's not why these composers that we play, that's not why they composed this music. They, they composed it for reflection, to add meaning and depth to our lives, to enrich us, um, and to challenge us to... to to be ennobled, to to uh, transcend the moment uh, that we're that we're in, so that we can we can live better lives together as a community. Well, I'm going to add some personal recommendations to your list. I'm a romantic, and uh, outside of the Rachmaninoff, uh, I've rediscovered. Let's see, the Brahms uh, 118 Intermezzo Opus 2, the piano. Right, right. That's also yeah. that's music, right? Yeah. It just it brings you to an uh, 
another place, a higher place of, of thinking. Uh, you're, you're not just getting your senses tickled. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's allowing you the, the space to, uh, to dream. Let's talk, let's talk about the performance we're going to see now. The string quartet, and these are actually some some pieces, a couple from Bach, a couple from the American Songbook, that are part of that uh, music as medicine program. Right. Yeah. So this is our string, our principal string quartet, uh, the Dakota String Quartet. So Dusuk Kim, our concert master, Magdalena Mozalewska is our principal second violinist, Yuchun Lin, our principal viola, and our newly minted principal cello, uh, Robbie Earhart. 